In the last video, we looked at using named and unnamed comments. In this one, we're going to take a look at quick journals and recurring journals. Before quick journal can be created, a template needs to be defined on the setup financial menu in the quick journal window. I'm going to show a template I've previously created called bank transfer, where I've selected a source document of GJ, given it a reference which will be used on the individual transactions when they're created of bank transfer. I've selected an offset account and a range of other accounts for which values are to be posted. I can also choose whether or not to allow the offset account to be overridden when the transaction is created. You can add as many accounts to the Quick Journal template as you want to use. It's just a case of inputting values when the Quick Journal itself is created. And that's done on the Transactions Financial menu on a Quick Journal. And in here, you look up the template you've previously created, and all the information is defaulted through with the header information can be updated if required. And then it's a case of going through and entering the values which are to be posted to the accounts. If there's a line which will be left off the journal this time, just simply skip over and leave the value at zero. The remaining balance at the end will be automatically posted by GP to the offset account. So if I post this journal, print the report to screen, we'll see that the journal that's been created has the remaining £5,000 automatically posted to the savings account. So quick journals are a good way of quickly getting information into the system without having to manually select the accounts each time. Recurring journals can also be used to speed up the entry of transactions on the system. These are entered through the standard batches window under Transactions Financial. If we create a batch called Bank Transfer, the type General Entry, we can choose the frequency of posting. We have multiple options. Commonly used ones, single use for a single posting, or for recurring journals, weekly, monthly or quarterly, are the ones I've typically seen used. If we select monthly, we can then choose the number of recurring postings. If we leave this at zero, it will continue to recur until we delete the batch in future, or we can give it a set number of times to recur. In this case, I'll leave it endlessly recurring. And I can choose whether or not to clear recurring amounts on each posting which means that each time, if I am clearing recurring amounts, I need to set the values before I post it again. And to add transactions to the batch, click the Transactions button, and then enter the details for the journals that should be created. So in this case, I'll pick the Savings account, and post £10,000, and then I'll just select a couple of other cards to offset against it. Save that away. Note the transaction date of the 12th of April. If I load the batch in, post it, it will post one instance of this, but the batch remains behind for subsequent postings. If I drill into the transactions, you'll see that the date has automatically been incremented by the system. And on the batch as well, one thing to note is that it keeps a track of the number of times the batch has been posted and when the last posting was. Additionally, if you want to inquire on the batch using Smartlist, what we can do is do a lookup on the journal entry number and you'll see that all postings of the batch are showing on the system. So the one that we posted in April is showing with the same journal entry number as the one which is waiting to be posted next time. So we can always look and see how much the journal has been posted. So that's a quick overview of quick journals and recurring journals. Next we're going to take a look at combining budgets.